Okay, welcome everyone to the second uh, Community Block Aiming Know Your Rights workshop. I'll, um, I'll just hand it over to Carol again to do our same spiel, but just for anyone who wasn't at the last one, at our January 15 meeting we decided that if work started on the local CSG project we would launch a Community Block Aid, not because we particularly want to, but because we feel we've been left with no other choice. We've informed the community, we've taken action in mass numbers, we've submitted a 30,000 strong petition to the government, the approvals keep happening, we feel we've been pushed into this, into this position. But to, have comp to, 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 be, to confidently be involved in such a blockade, you need to know your legal rights. So Carol Berry is a lawyer and she's kind enough, been kind enough to donate her time today and, and expertise to brief us on our rights should such a blockade happen. So thank you, Carol. Um, so I just gave this, um, this talk about 10 minutes ago, so I'll just say it all again. <laughs> um, I, uh, I don't specialise in criminal law, I specialise in health and human rights law. Um, so if I have, um, if there's a question um, that people have that I can't answer because it isn't my area of specialisation, I'll go away way and, and find out the answer for you and make sure that's sent back through to the um, the campaign organisers. Most of the information that I'm presenting today comes from the New South Wales Activist Rights Manual, which I think will be sent around um, as a link um, to everybody who plans to participate. Um, I will whiz through, if I can, relatively quickly so that we can have more time for questions and answers. Um, really, the difference between a normal protest and blockade is that I would describe a blockade as a protest with a bit of an edge um, because you generally are um, uh, blockading or blocking a road um, or an access point in order to try and prevent an operation which you disagree with. Now I've personally participated in a number of blockades in my time. Um, all of those blockades have been very well organised and they've remained peaceful and there's, there's been really no, nothing that I can think of which caused me any concern and I'm a relatively conservative person. Um, so I would say that simply by choosing to participate in the blockade, this isn't um, a major legal step. Um, so I, I would, um, from the outset, say that um, it's, it's not a major risk going along and being there. I will, um, I, I just break my advice into three sections. Um, most of the time with a blockade, because you are blocking the road or you're blocking an access point, the police at some point generally arrive, so they do attend a protest of this nature. Um, so I will basically talk about before the police arrive, when the police arrive, and if you choose to be arrested, what happens when you're arrested. Now you don't have to be arrested at a protest, that's a choice that people make. Most blockades start um, quite early in the morning. Um, so um, the first people to arrive usually are um, employees of the company that you're blockading or company representatives. Um, and then usually, often the media arrives next and then at some stage the police arrive um, as well. Now, most blockades will elect representatives, and I imagine this one would if it takes place. Um, and those representatives are authorised to speak with company representatives, and then you'll have some representatives which are authorised to speak with the media, and then you'll have some representatives that are authorised to deal with the police. If you are not one of those people, I would strongly advise you not to talk to anyone, um, aside from your, uh, your campaign colleagues. Um, stick together. Don't wander off down the road by yourself um, and really uh, keep a cool head through the whole event. Um, I advise people to, um, to really keep, keep your cool in the event of a blockade um, because I think it's um, important that if we choose to participate in these things that we really do set an example in our behaviour um, as to how we should treat one another. Um, so I would suggest that, um, you know, marching around aggressively and behaving like a jerk, leave that to, to uh, the other side, if you like. Um, I really think it's a good idea for everybody who participates in a blockade um, to, really, uh, to really set the standard 
um, in part because ethically that's the right thing to do, because the media will often be there and it's like you don't want to detract away from the issue that you're trying to highlight and also because it's in your legal interest to really keep a cool head and to be cooperative um, and to, to not engage in the argy-bargy, basically. Um, as a general rule, um, once the police do arrive, and you, and you will, if you participate in the blockade, you, you often do see them arrive. Um, often further down the road, you'll see them arrive, and, and blockade representatives will go and, and speak to the police. Um, as a general rule, you do not need to identify yourself in protest, so if a police officer asks you your name and address, you do not have to tell them. Um, I would suggest to people who are participating in a blockade, um, especially if you're pregnant or you have a health condition, to avoid the police. So hang back and let other people um, deal with the police and indeed just sit back and see how things pan out. Um, at some point, as a, as a general rule, police will um, they'll speak to the, the blockade organisers or people who are police liaison and they will say, we've made a decision that we're going to move in break up your blockade. So we are, we would like people to now get off the road and clear this um, access. Um, and if you choose not to get off the road, then we're going to start to move in and arrest people in order to force them to move out of the way. Um, I've never attended a blockade where the police do not give you that option. I think it probably creates less work for them, to be honest, <laughs> to, to get as many people as possible to willingly get out of the way. Um, so that's that's why they would, um, I think, most of the time give you that option. Similarly, because this, this, this campaign enjoys so much public support and the media will be there, similarly, you, you can imagine that the police will also be conscious of the fact that they're under the spotlight as well. Um, so they, they're not going to be wanting to um, behave in a, in a silly fashion either. Um, once um, the police do move forward, um, and if you, if you, uh, if, I would suggest you think of it through in advance, the night before, um, if not months in advance, um, do you think under those circumstances you would like to be arrested or you're going to make yourself available to be arrested? Um, I've never been arrested, and that's something that I've always avoided, and I plan to participate in this blockade, and I, I won't be getting arrested myself, um, because that's something that I don't feel comfortable with, but other people feel differently. If you decide that you, after the police suggest that it's time to get out of the way, that you don't get out of the way, um, and you are placed under arrest, I'll just quickly go through what you can expect to have happen. Um, being arrested means that you're under the control of the police, and you're no longer free to go where you wish. If you refuse to move or you lie down, um, the police do have the power to pick you up and move you. Um, once you're arrested, it's a further offence and a serious offence um, to resist or abuse the police. So if you are arrested, don't fight back, don't verbally assault them, just cooperate um, because there are serious charges that can apply if you do um, fight or argue back. Um, generally, when you're arrested, the police will put their hand on your shoulder and tell you you're under arrest. Um, at that point, it's worth asking what you're being arrested for, um, and either to remember that or to write it down. You also have the right to ask the police officer their name and rank. When you've been arrested, you'll ordinarily be taken to the nearest police station for questioning, which means that you'll be put into a police vehicle and, and you'll go to the nearest police station. Um, if you are arrested and the police ask you your name and address, under those circumstances, you do need to tell them who you are. Um, there, are um, there are charges which apply to um, mislead the police as to your name and address, so to tell them the truth. Um, at the police station, they'll also ask you a number of personal care questions, such as what medication you're taking or whether you have epilepsy, and all those questions relate to ensuring your safety whilst you're in custody, I would advise that you answer those questions. But aside from that, um, I would exercise your right to silence. Um, that whole thing that you hear in the movies, you know, anything you say will be used against you in the court law, um, all that happens in New South Wales as well. Um, so you have a right to remain silent. Um, anything that you say can be used against you. 
um, and that involves casual or seemingly off the record conversations with the police, just don't have them, um, would be my advice. Um, say no comment to every question that they ask you. Um, if they ask you if you want to be interviewed, say no. Um, don't give a partial interview. Um, if, they, if they sit you down and they press an audio tape, just say, I don't wish to be interviewed and I've got nothing to say. Um, if they ask you if you want to make a statement, you should seek legal advice first. Um, you can certainly um, sign receipts for property um, and to sign things to say that you received certain notices from the police, but do not sign a statement or an admission without legal advice and don't initial a police officer's notebook without advice. Um, the police must charge you with an offence or release you at the end of a detention period. Um, often in protest scenarios, and certainly people in the last workshop um, gave numerous examples of where this happened, where you might be arrested and taken to the police station, but then subsequently released and not charged with anything. That, that often happens, but you can't assume that's what will definitely happen. So if you, if you put yourself forward to, to be arrested, or if you choose to be arrested, you should assume that you might be charged if you are charged, you might be charged with an offence um, such as obstruction, and that generally involves a fine. There are also more serious offences which apply, um, which are in the activist rights manual, which it's just worth having a squeeze at that if you are thinking you might get arrested. You have the right to seek legal advice while you're in custody, um, but also once you've been charged and released, you can then obviously seek legal advice at that point as well, and it's strongly advised to do so. That is pretty much it. Um, really, um, you know, as a summary, um, my advice is to, uh, like I said, um, stick together, um, decide in advance whether or not you, you'd like to get arrested, try not to make that spur of the moment decision, um, and most blockades really uh, don't involve a major legal consequence. Um, and so you can generally feel fairly confident that you will be in control of the situation if you participate. Um, but that's, a, that's, a, that's my general advice. Um, I would say to you, arm yourself with the facts. Be prepared for the consequences if you choose to get arrested. Um, and largely, my advice would be to, to stay out of the way of the police on the day. Thank you, Carol. Before I open to some quick questions, I just want to make a point that um, uh, if, if, if we do, if, if we are forced to launch a community blockade, it will be very well organised, it will be very peaceful, and we will have appointed police liaisons who will explain with crystal clarity what's going on at, at, at every step of the way. And 90 time, 99 times out of 100, if there is a situation where the police um, might want to move in and there's a possibility of arrests, every single person will have that very clear choice. Do I want to stay? Do I want to step aside? But we have asked Carol to come along here and with, with the truth and, 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 and raise worst case scenarios because everything we've done since we launched this group was just to inform as much as possible so people can make their own decision based on that information. Now, um, I'll just take three quick questions at a time and then go back to Carol. And the first two I'm... Oh, okay, I'll take Andrew, Tony, um, and then this one. Yeah. Thanks, Tony. Yeah, um, oh, sorry. Um, Michael Hall, Sydney Police. My question was regarding um, things like cameras. Like often I take my camera um, to rallies. Can the police take my camera and then try to use that as evidence in any way? Can they, do they have the right to take my camera and look at my photos? Have you ever had any experience with that? Um, and just one other thing I just wanted to mention is that I've attempted a number of blockades, and yeah, you're right. Normally the police will make it clear, you know, walk, as they're walking over to where people are, they will, you know, say, if you don't move, we're going to arrest you, and they give you a bit of a chance to get out of the way if you, yeah. yeah I suppose. Uh, if you haven't been arrested and they ask for a name, like, you know, um, I was just wondering if you stop the call saying the ask will provide a list of solicitors and phone numbers should be needed. Yeah. 
your question about your camera and Andrew, um, I would imagine that you could take your camera along with with reasonable certainty that there wouldn't be any issues there. Um, but you know, if your camera and your photos are particularly precious to you, my my general advice would apply: just stay out of their way, just to be on the safe side. Yeah. Um, your question in regard to um, the police, um, if they're, if they're um, deciding to, to step forward and make arrests, they generally wouldn't ask you your name and address before they arrest you. If in the unlikely event that they did, before you're actually arrested, unless they have some, if, unless they have reason or suspicion that you've committed a, an offence, um, you're not obligated to give them your name and address. However, once they have arrested you, you are. Yeah, so does that, is that, does that answer your question? Uh, Sarah, is that a statement they made to you and you were actually arrested for what? Sir? Sir? Sorry. Yeah. I'm asking that, so this is a Civil Liberties and the Environmental Defenders Office, uh, but we'll, we'll most 